Um, hi, everyone. So today we're going to do a little bit of a fun little lab slash demo. And um, this is going to be a continuation of a blog series that I've been doing talking about um, virtual machines with Istio Service Mesh. And this one is kind of, there's a blog on Istio.io if you want to check it out. And it also, if you want to follow along with what I'm going to be doing today, I also have this um, posted in GitHub. And I'll be actually referencing it as we go through. So feel free to follow along. Um, but today, we're going to actually build a demo. And we're going to connect my local machine to an Istio service mesh running in Google Cloud. And so we're going to kind of build our own Istio proxy. We're going to take some shortcuts in a certain couple of places. but. We're going to kind of walk through the process of how Istio does some of its underlying um, features and how you how some of the connect communication happens from um, pod to pod or even from outside of a service outside of your service mesh or Kubernetes cluster. Um, but why would I build my own Istio proxy? Well, Today we're going to do it because we're going to learn about a couple different things related to um, some of the internals of Istio. First, we're going to talk about some of the architectures that exist outside of Kubernetes. And we're going to talk about some of the things that you should be doing today, um, even if you're not ex expanding beyond a single Kubernetes cluster, there's still some best practices that we're going to learn throughout this uh, talk today. Um, we're going to talk about MTLS and how that works in East-West gateways. And so we're going to little, learn a little bit about um, even Envoy. So we're going to learn about some internals of Istio and hopefully help you understand more about the, the traffic flow and how it should help you in the long run debugging um, your problems. And so we'll, talk, we'll be using the Istio CTL tool a little bit um, and looking at some, some of the commands that really help you as you implement and use Istio. And then, so the overall goal here is we're going to be connecting a local machine. And so we'll talk about a, a customer of mine that actually uses this in their everyday development lifecycle. They connect their local machines to clusters so that they can do some local development, but still communicate with applications running out in clusters. And so we'll talk about that at the end. But first, um, you'd be surprised that actually applications Still, people still run workloads outside of Kubernetes. Um, but all joking aside, from Inistio's perspective, you know, we kind of see Kubernetes in a lot of cases as a walled garden. And there's things that live in Kubernetes, and then there's everything else. And the only way that we typically have a communication with them is through like an ingress proxy. And so we're going to talk about today how you can break down that wall a little bit to kind of have still an app-to-app -app communication that breaks down that barrier that kind of Kubernetes has, you know, with the, the networking and all that stuff. And so we're going to kind of blend the layers here and connect things that exist outside Kubernetes. And the hope is that um, you understand a little bit more about the opportunities that you can add service mesh to outside of your Kubernetes cluster. Um, all right. So let's, we're going to get started on our demo here, and we'll be I'll be flipping back and forth between the terminal and um, the presentation. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to install Istio. We're going to configure it for my local machine to connect to it, and I'll talk about some of the things that we do to set that up. We're going to set up our um, local proxy on my machine. We're going to use Docker, and then we're going to deploy and test it. And then I'm also going to show you um, some useful tricks, request transformations. We're going to be transforming a gRPC to JSON requests um, as a useful add-on to your local proxy. But first, we got to talk about everyone's favorite topic, and that's certificates. And this is something that's really important in your production environments. And it's, you know, Istio makes mutual TLS so easy but it's almost too easy in the fact that you forget about it. And so you may not know, but out of the box, if you do not provide Istio its own um, signing certificate, it actually automatically creates it. And that's in a secret called CA certs. And so it's actually a really important secret and that shouldn't really be managed by Istio. That's something you should be managing um, 
outside of Istio, and I'll talk about a couple of reasons why. Um, so the recommended approach is that you actually manage it um, completely outside of Kubernetes. And there's a lot of really good third party um, providers to do this with. Um, some of the recommended ones, you know, ACM, Cert Manager, Vault, and then also there's Google Cloud has a, an offering as well. But the reason why you wanna do this is that this is a really important certificate that if it got lost, your entire mesh would, wouldn't be able to communicate with each other. And, and so it's really important that you store this, or even if you have to rotate it, you could have downtime. And so it's really important that you, you remove that root certificate outside of Kubernetes and store it in with a secure manager. And then also as your Istio service mesh grows, if you plan ahead, you can actually set up your clusters for multi-cluster um, communication by you know, having a common route of trust. And so not only is it great, good from a security perspective just to have that stored securely, you actually set yourself up better in the future if you need that cross-cluster communication. And we're actually gonna be using this today in our demo because we're gonna use an, uh, another signing CA for my local machine. And so the reason why we split out Istio issuing its own workload certificates versus my, another intermediate CA for my workload certificate is that you could really see this expanding into a real life um, example. And so if you have this other intermediate for signing local machine certificates, you can now manage those you know, outside of the internal Istio mesh. They'll, since they are still rooted in the they have the same same root CA, they'll still be able to communicate with each other. And we'll show that in the demo here shortly. Um, but it allows you to manage them as separate entities. And so if you had um, a whole team of developers, you could issue each developer their own certificate to communicate with the mesh. And that would be in their own intermediate. So it's not really affecting the workloads in your service mesh. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna use Cert Manager today to do that. I've already installed it in my cluster and we're gonna set up, we have a root CA, we're gonna set up two intermediates using Cert Manager. One intermediate is gonna be used by Istio to sign and issue those workload certificates inside the mesh. And then outside the mesh, we're gonna use a, a local machine CA to issue one for my local machine. So <clears throat> we're gonna hop over here to my GitHub repository that I showed earlier on. And so if you want to follow along, we're going to be um, setting up Cert Manager. And so I've already deployed Cert Manager. And we can see that in my Kubernetes stuff that our Cert Manager stuff is deployed. And I already uploaded a root CA. I used OpenSSL to issue one. And now we're going to, we're going to use that to create two intermediate certificates and the and my um, local machine is one, one as well. And so I'm just gonna post that in here and get those created. And then Cert Manager is going to create those uh, certificates and we should see them as secrets pop up shortly. And so by default though, the secret format that um, Cert Manager generates them is not compatible with Istio. And we're actually working on a fix for that as well so that it can read those. But um, we're just gonna copy that secret from Cert Manager, reformulate it into the Istio specific format and then upload it back to Istio. And we haven't deployed Istio at this time. This is something you typically wanna do before you set up your service mesh, but you can actually rotate your CAs as well. And so it is something you could do after the fact. So, okay, we're gonna copy that locally here and then I re-uploaded it. And so if we take a look on the left-hand side, let me scoot this back over. And we take a look, there's our CA cert secret. This is what Istio, Istio expects. And that since it's already there, when we install Istio, it's gonna just pick that up and use that as a certificate um, signing CA. All right, and then finally, we're gonna generate one for my local machine. We're using the Istio spiffy notation. And so that's um, gonna be important later on in case we want to um, do some authorization from my local machine when I communicate with the service mesh. 
And so we're gonna go ahead and uh, create that certificate as well. And then we're gonna wait for a second here for Cert Manager to generate that secret. And then we're just gonna download that one because I'm gonna use it later for connecting my local machine. All right. And so that kind of concludes the certificate piece of it. Um, it's, it's kind of something that a lot of developers typically don't have to deal with, but it's really important that you plan for this um, before you install Istio so that you have the best practices in mind. Um, and then we're gonna move on to installing Istio. Um, so this Istio installation is gonna be very vanilla. We're gonna um, kind of just install Istio pretty plainly, but the, the two neat things that we're gonna be doing today is using the Helm installation. Um, that was available in Istio 1.12. And so it's really nice and easy for installing Istio. And so we're gonna use that. And then we're gonna also use the gateway injection. And so there's a new um, injection webhook that when you deploy a gateway, it's being used to deploy the gateway itself. And so these two things are included in the demo and make easy Istio a lot easier to deploy and manage. Um, also, I think I put the, the link in here, the artifacthub.io is where you can find the Istio Helm charts and their values. So you can go take a look at those there. Um, so we're gonna add the Helm repo and then we're gonna go ahead and install Istio. Um, so Istio is kind of broken out into its core components and uh, Helm charts. So we have the base, which is your CRDs. And then there's an Istio D related chart as well, as well as another one is a, uh, for gateways. And so we're gonna use all three of those today. And we'll be installing 112.6. Um, what we're doing here, the only thing that might be interesting to someone, there we go, that looks better, is we're gonna be, um, disabling the pilot skip validate trust domain. And that's because we're giving our um, proxies, our local machine proxies, their own uh, spiffy cluster wrote trust domain. And so pilot normally would not allow those. And we're just gonna turn that off for this demo. And so go ahead and install Istio. And then as I said, as Istio comes up, it's gonna pick up that CA certs and we'll have that common root of trust then ready to go. Uh, all right, and that should only take about a second here. And then the second thing they're gonna do while we wait for this to finish is we're gonna install two applications. One is an HTTP application called Frontend, and the other one is a gRPC application called Fortune Teller. And so we're gonna deploy those into the IstioCon namespace. All right, and so those should come up shortly here. Let's see. All right. Let's go back and make sure we have everything up and deployed. Uh, there they are. All right, you can see them coming up now. And there's our applications. Okay, great. So the, while those are installing, we're gonna move on then and kind of talk about how we're gonna configure Istio for our local machine. Um, and so unless you've done some multi-cluster communication, you're probably not gonna be familiar with East-West gateways. So we're gonna talk about why those are important and what their function is in um, the Istio kind of architecture. So as we, get, as we talked about again, we have this kind of walled garden that we wanna kind of break down and allow outside things to communicate with apps more directly um, than just going through an ingress gateway. And an ingress gateway typically um, terminates connections and establishes new ones. And so you lose a lot of identity and um, app to app security in that. And so that's why we, we want to use something like an east-west gateway. And so what we're going to do is open up this, um, this avenue for our local machine and other Istio-based um, deployments to communicate essentially directly with in applications running in the service mesh. And so how this works is the east-west gateway um, passes through these MTLS connect, uh, communications to those uh, applications running inside the service mesh. And so it preserves the machine identities. And it also, um, is since it's a TCP pass-through, it's end-to-end -end encrypted. And so my local machine will be able to communicate with apps directly in the service mesh um, securely. 
And so this is what our demo is kind of going to look like. We're going to deploy an east-west gateway um, and set up routes, an HTTP route to the front end, and then an HTTP or gRPC route to the fortune teller application. And so we'll go ahead and set that up right now. Um, one thing that's really important to talk about is that Istio has this um, router mode called SNI DNAT. And, that's gonna, and I'll show you kind of what that means in a second here. But it allows you essentially to dynamically add host to the east-west gateway for uh, this, kind, this kind of uh, pass-through routing. And so we're using Helm to install the Istio east-west gateway. That also is then using the injection method to install the gateway. And so that's up and running. And now if we take a, if we take a look here, we're going to create a gateway object in Istio. And we're going to call it it's using the auto pass through method. And so as MTLS communication comes in, we're going to expose hosts um, through this gateway that if the SNI matches, it's going to pass that, that communication straight through the, to the backend application. And so we're allowing anything to the IstioCon namespace. And then we're also going to create some service entries to make it a little easier. And so any service entry with the solo.io um, host name, we would also pass through that communication. And so we're going to create that. And then I'll show you what that's doing to the east-west gateway. Um, the other thing we do is we're going to create these service entries, just kind of make the communication a little bit easier. Um, and so we're going to create a service entry for the front end called frontend.solo.io. And I'll show you how that, that translates in an east-west gateway. Um, port 8080, and that forwards to the front end. And then we also have one for the fortune teller app as well. And so we're going to go ahead and create that. All right. And so now that we have those service entries, if we go and take a look at the, the configuration within the gateway, you're going to see um, some host names set up for SNI routing already. And so let's see if this is, yeah, it's gonna be a little ugly here. So we got a second view. We'll do the second view here. And so if we look at the listener, so what's happening is that the CIS-West gateway does TCP pass through, but it's matching on these server name, the SNIs. And so if we take a look and filter down to the, the filter chain matches, we're gonna see that the east-west gateway will match on SNIs that are set to these four, four things. And so as long as we have um, the SNI set to one of these four, it's gonna forward it along to that application. And I'll, I have a, a picture to kind of explain this in a little more detail. But um, what we're gonna be using today is these two SNIs at the bottom for the service entries that we created. But with the SNI DNAT setting that we set on the east-west gateway, as we add hosts, and if they, they match the east-west gateway, they'll automatically update the SNI list in the east-west gateway. And so this is kind of dynamic, and you wouldn't have to really come and mess with this any bit anymore because it'll automatically update as um, more hosts are added. Um, but that would be gate, uh, dependent on your gateway configuration as well. Um, so if we want to take a look at kind of what the what's being set within Envoy itself, um, we're going to take a look again at the east-west gateway. This is the Envoy listener filter. And we're going to, if we scroll down just a little bit, we'll be able to see, um, let's see here, that we are doing a TCP proxy. And so that's like our TCP pass-through. But if we scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see here that we have a listener filter. And we need this TLS inspector for the to inspect the SNI header. And so that we're using... Um, this SNI header to match and then forward to the correct backend, whether that be front end or the fortune teller application. And that you can actually see that right here in the server names. That would be the SNI that we're trying to route to. Um, okay. And so that um, is pretty much the setup that we need on the um, cluster side. And we're going to move on to the agent here. But I have a, kind of a recap of what's happening. Um, within the east-west gateway as well. Um, so I'll jump back here, but how, do, how is this working? So what, this is essentially what we just did. We set up an SNI listener on port 15443. And so if inbound traffic that is you know, encrypted with TLS has this SNI header, we use a gateway object um, and the SNI DNAT 
to automatically forward to a backend application. And so as long as we have that matching SNI, it'll go to the right application in the backend. Um, but now let's talk about this. Um, why would I use an east-west gateway over an ingress gateway, which a lot of us are already familiar with? Well, it, there's a couple advantages. Um, one is that you now have end-to-end -end MTLS authentication. And so you can actually have an application internal to the mesh allow or deny things that are coming from another service mesh or just anywhere outside of your um, Kubernetes cluster. With the SNID, uh, it allows you for dynamic routing internal to your service mesh. So as long as those SNI routes exist and are updated, you can call other applications as they're deployed. Um, because we're using the spiffy format, you can add authorization policies to allow or deny who can communicate with what. And actually, this is how multi-cluster communication actually works. And so not only are you know we kind of showing you this demo, but this is actually, if we take a look at how Istio defines these multi-primary on separate networks, we can see here that service A trying to call service B in cluster two goes through, which this is an east-west gateway to service B. And with MTLS, we are preserving service A's identity all the way to service B, so you can decide or not if you want to allow that cross-cluster communication or not. And so service B has, because it's fully encrypted and authenticated end-to-end, -end, you can decide if you want to allow service A. And so this technique that we're using today is rooted in all of our multi-cluster communication here. All right, so now that our um, cluster is kind of set up, and we're ready to accept traffic from outside the Kubernetes, outside of our Kubernetes cluster, we're gonna start building our Istio proxy. And I'm gonna say kind of, because we're gonna take some shortcuts to make this a little bit easier. Um, so here's kind of what the my local machine environment's gonna look like. Um, I'm gonna use a client, which is gonna be curl or GP, gRPC curl. And we're gonna run an Istio do proxy Docker image in Docker, and then we're gonna manually configure the Envoy inside it. And we're gonna do static YAML configuration just to kind of show you some of the things that Istio does under the hood to enable this kind of communication. Um, we're gonna use the certificates that I downloaded from my local machine. Um, and then that'll allow us to communicate directly with things within the service mesh. Um, and we're gonna use the Docker image, the proxy v2 image, and the reason we do that is because there's a lot of built-in filters um, and I think communication protocols that make it a lot easier to communicate with the service mesh. And so like the built-in WASM filters and such. And so we're gonna use that image, but we're gonna configure Envoy manually. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, so if you're not too familiar with how uh, Envoy works or how we're gonna configure, there's three things that are really important for us to configure here. We need to set up an Envoy listener, and that's gonna be where are we gonna be listening for traffic. And we're actually gonna set up two listeners, one for port 8000 and one for 8001, and we're gonna separate our HTTP and our gRPC traffic. Then it, after the traffic's been accepted by Envoy, where are we gonna route it? Are we, you know, we gotta pick the backends that we're gonna route it to, and you can optionally add request, trans request and response transformations. And so we're gonna do that at the end by transforming requests from gRPC to JSON based REST requests. Um, and then finally, how are we gonna transport it? Well, that's probably the most important piece for communicating with a service mesh is we need to enable MTLS um, and send that traffic along to the gateway with the correct SNI headers. And so we're gonna talk about each of these in a little bit more uh, depth. Um, but we're going to start with transportation, and that's because we just left the cluster, uh, as we've shown before. We just need to call the east-west gateway on port 15443, and we need to set that SNI header. So since that's fresh in our heads, we're going to start there. So we need to create uh, a gate. We need to get our gateway endpoint, grab our certificates, and then set the SNI. And so if we can do those three things and program Envoy to do that we should be able to establish um, a connection with the east-west gateway and then forward traffic to the end application. 
Um, and kind of to show you what that kind of looks like, let's see here. Um, scroll down to our cluster. And so in Envoy, they're called clusters. And so they're not really too complicated if you think about their main objective. We, we're setting up where we're calling, which is going to be our load balance endpoint here. We're, and that's the east-west gateway IP address. And we're calling port 15443. And the other, there's two more things that we need to do. We need to make sure we set the SNI host, which here it, is, it matches the ones that we showed earlier. And then finally, we need to use our certificates to set up our uh, mutual TLS communication. And so even though there's quite a bit of YAML here, it's just three main responsibilities that we're trying to program here to set up communication with a, a service mesh. Um, first, we need to, and then going back to number one, we need to set up the listeners. And so where are we going to listen for traffic? And so you have a couple of different options. And you can set up a port per service, which we're going to do in this demo. So port 8000 will forward to the front end application. Port 8001 will communicate with the Fortune application. Um, but you don't necessarily have to do this. You can match on host names or uh, path matching, or you know, there's all kinds of route kinds of matching you can do. But doing it by port makes it really easy for our demo. And so we're going to demo communicating here with our um, front end application using this uh, port per service. And so to set up a listener, it's very it's actually quite simple. Um, this is our listener configuration. We obviously are setting up port 8000. And then we're just setting up a route match that says anything on port 8000, route to the front end cluster that we have defined. And so we're actually going to go and try that out now and see if it works. All right. So let's scroll down to the bottom. And so I have a Docker Compose example um, to do this. And so if you want to see what a full... Um, Envoy YAML kind of looks like for this configuration. It'll be, uh, you can cat three local machine and then Envoy HTTP. And so if you cat the Envoy HTTP YAML, you should be able to see a full example of those three things put together, the listeners, the routers, and then the clusters. And so you can do it. Um, one thing that you should uh, note is that we need to run this command up here to grab the gateway IP address. And I just have a template that'll generate, it'll grab the load balancer IP address and then update our template so that we are current here. And so now that we have that set up, we should be able to start it using Docker Compose. Uh, we'll show you what that looks like as well. And so it's extremely simple. Um, what we're doing is we're gonna be override, we're gonna be using the proxy V2 image, which all sidecars use. And we're just going to change the entry point to instead of, be, instead of being an Istio one, we're calling the Envoy binary directly. And so, and then we're just feeding in this um, configuration that I just wrote. And the only other thing is we'll be uploading our certificates and listening on port 8000. And so I should be able to make requests on port 8000 for my local machine, and it'll forward all the way to the service mesh. Um, and we should get a response. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to. Enable Docker Compose here, and that should start up Envoy. And that looks healthy. And so I think if I go to my browser and go to localhost 8000 info or info window, any anyone will respond to, and there it is. So now we're communicating from my local machine to a GKE cluster running in Google Cloud, and from and with end-to-end -end encryption. And um, if you take a look at this X forwarded for client cert here, which I can zoom in a bunch, you can see it actually has the identity of my local machine. And so my the front end application actually saw that it was my local machine communicating with it. So that's actually really great. And then so finally, for the last one, we haven't talked about um, the second part of it yet, which is transformations. And so transformations allow you to manipulate the traffic in flight. And so what we're going to be doing here on the right side, and I haven't updated this diagram, but on port 8001, we're going to be making, um, we can make gRPC or JSON requests 
And we're going to use the Envoy gRPC to JSON transcoder to translate that request to gRPC and send it to our Fortunes application. And so it's a really nice um, feature if you do a lot of gRPC um, in your service meshes, you can actually make JSON requests from your local machine and they will be translated to gRPC for you. And so we'll go ahead and enable that. And right here. So we have another example that'll be setting that up. And so we're going to be starting our, there we go. We've started our server again with the gRPC JSON transcoder. And we're going to use uh, gRPC curl to see what that, um, the proto looks like. So because this proto has um, the HTTP options, we should be able to make gRPC calls to the predict endpoint, but we should also be able to make REST requests to v1 fortune user ID and get a response as well. And then Envoy is going to read that and translate that to a, a gRPC request for us. And so to prove that gRPC still works, we're going to run a gRPC command to test it out. And there we go. We got a response from our, G our fortune teller application using gRPC. And then we should also be able to go to the browser and make an HTTP request. And so let's check that out as well. Oh, and that one wasn't able to render. There you go. And so we were able to make a request to v1 fortune Nick. And our local proxy was translating that in, in route and sending that to um, our service mesh. And so that kind of concludes the demo part of it. And so I just want to talk a little bit about like why is this useful and when is this useful? Well, one of um, the customers I've been working with for a long time here, Constant Contact actually uses this in their daily um, in their daily software development like lifecycle. Like I said in the beginning, they connect their developer machines to their service mesh and to enable local development. And so um, there's a a talk about how they do that and how it's improved their software development lifecycle. There is the link below. Um, secondly. Understanding how Istio does its communication and how you can program your own proxy to communicate with service mesh enables you to think a little bit more outside the box. And so we've been working with a lot of different customers around building custom solutions that meet the customer's feature requirement needs. And so in this example here, anytime communication leaves a data center and goes to a public cloud, there is a requirement for this person or this company that they must have a DMZ in which all traffic enters, gets decrypted, and then re-encrypted and sent to um, the public cloud. And so they do a bunch of auditing and request um, monitoring in that DMZ. And so they needed a custom proxy to kind of facilitate their needs, but we still enable them a uh, service mesh on both sides using Istio. And so by just pro setting up the Istio proxy ourselves, they can tune that for their own needs. And then finally, um, if you add something like multi-cluster and you have something like a multi-cluster agent, you can actually add high avail have a high availability for your virtual machines. And so in this case, um, the no matter which east-west gateway this um, virtual machine calls, it'll make sure that a route it makes it to an application a cluster with an application running. And so it adds a, a level of high availability as well. Um, but you know, finally, why not just run the real Istio proxy with XDS? And the answer is you can. Um, we've been working on a, a number of solutions on doing this. Um, most recently, which we had weren't ready for at this presentation, but we call a, a white box proxy. And we've been able to run the full Istio proxy with communication with this DoD for its XDS requests without IP tables and root access. Um, and that gives you like automatic cert rotation and all, and now you have Istio D programming your Istio proxy. And so this allowed us to expand into more environments like Docker, ECS and on-prem machines. And so we've been doing a lot more work in this area and you probably will see more communications from me and uh, my team related to um, expanding your Istio service mesh beyond Kubernetes. Um, and so that kind of concludes it. Um, my name is Nick Nellis. If you want to learn more about that white box proxy, you can hit me up directly, uh, reach out, and I can share with you where we're at with that. Um, and finally, um, Solo is hiring. We're growing extremely rapidly. 
and it, we have a lot of great Istio people that you work with. And so if Istio is something that you are excited about, feel free to reach out after this. Um, so thank you. Thank you.